welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living here in the heart of Las Cruces, where our vision is a world in loving partnership for the good of all. I hope you had a lovely holiday so far, whatever you celebrate, and thanks so much for all who joined us and zoomed in at Christmas Eve for our Zoom celebration. That was really nice as well. We did that with all of the different New Thought Centers here in town. And I would like to welcome anyone visiting here for the first time, and those of you who are returning after a long time, we have some of those in the, uh, out there in the seats as well. I would like to ask everyone to make sure that your phones are on vibrate or on silent. Thank you. And to please note that our Course in Miracles group that meets here on Saturdays is not going to be meeting again until January 8th, in case you are a regular attendee. And we, I wanted to let you know that we've been asking folks who knit or crochet to make lap blankets, and we delivered some already and the sheriff called me personally and was choked up and thanked me for all that we already brought Teresa took her down a bunch so it's greatly appreciated and if any of you can do that and want to start doing that at home and bring us in a uh, when you get them done we'll make sure they get delivered so thank you it's very appreciated she was really touched by what we were doing and then this Wednesday it's already December 29th and it is the day that Martha Ward was born, and so we will be having a birthday party in memory of her. At four o'clock, we will gather in the social hall at 4.30. We'll have a time of remembrance with a few words that are from her own writings. And then we will have a potluck followed, and we are asking for people to wear masks during the first part, and if you're not vaccinated, to not stay while we eat because people have to take their masks off while we eat. And this is in honor of her and her awareness of what needed to happen at times like this. And I also hope to see you all here to help us welcome in the new year and meditate on world peace at 5 a.m. this coming Friday. <laughs> and of course, if you can't make it here, do it at home. But all around the world, we'll be joining other people, <clears throat> excuse me, who are meditating on world peace at that same time. So the time that we're assigned is 5 a.m. We will also then go to breakfast at the Village Inn after for anyone who would like to join us. And I'm figuring out which classes to offer, so I handed each of you a slip. If you're interested in taking a class, please fill it out. If not, just leave the blank slip in the back. And if you do fill it out, you can just drop it in the offering plate and I'll collect them out of there at the end of the service. And thank you so much. If you'll please welcome our practitioner of service, Teresa. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Teresa Valenzuela. I'm a practitioner here at the Center for Spiritual Living in the heart of Las Cruces, where we believe in the power of prayer, which we call spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. Please fill out a prayer request, which can be found in pockets on the chair backs <coughs> or behind you if you are in the front row. Uh, there is a God can at the table on your way out that you can drop that in or also the offering plates are back there. Um, we meet on Tuesday afternoons, the New Thought practitioners and ministers and, and pray, pray you up with you, with your request. And in addition, should you have something, a gratitude that you'd love to share with us so we can see how is prayer working in, in this community, there are also uh, little cards in the chair backs. And I would love to have 20 plus gratitude um, cards to type up for our Tuesday prayer because it is about not just uh, praying and giving but also receiving and sharing that good news, the honest. So now it is time for song, silence, and prayer. Heard. In this moment this 
So I invite everyone to put a little smile on their face right now and just feel that joy and gratitude and knowing that we are in exactly the right place at the right time and that we step into this place with a heart filled with openness, with gratitude, with kindness and joy, starting with ourselves and allowing that to radiate out into the world and knowing there is only one creative mind and that which flows in us, through us, and around us, and is always for us. God is all there is, and we are one with and in God, and reminding ourselves of the I am that I am, and so grateful for this day together, for the words that will enter through our ears and flow down into our hearts this morning. We are blessed. And so it is. This morning, the reading that I'm sharing with you is from a book titled, And So It Is, a book of un uncommon prayer. And it's written by a Reverend Angelica Jane Taggart, a CSL minister. And so she starts every morning with a little story and then an affirmation. And this is today's story, actually. In 2011, a friend, Eric Stephen Rankin, author of The Aquarians, wrote, On the winter solstice a couple of days ago, when the northern hemisphere of Earth began to experience ever more light with each passing day, comet Lovejoy appeared on the horizon and was called the most incredible sight I've ever seen by a crew member aboard the International Space Station. This is the comet that was supposed to have been burned up by its close pass by the sun, but instead survived to create a visual wonder at Christmas solstice time. And its name is Lovejoy. What are the odds? Maybe we're getting a message. And then Reverend Angelica goes on to say, what if we were getting a message? I got excited about this idea. What if Comet Lovejoy was foretelling a new age, like the star the Magi followed to find the Christ? This time, though, there is not one Christ, but many. What if we are now living in the period of time the people of the future, our future ancestors, will call the shift, time of transformation, or the age of enlightenment. You can't deny that the consciousness of humanity is changing rapidly. I see it changing for the good. If we believe it, we have a great responsibility. Each one of us is participating in creating our future, the future of the world, in our own way. And it is up to us to expand our boundaries and do our best for the good of all. This means to be conscious of being conscious, to honor and respect all the many aspects of life, the earth and all it is made of, the plants that grow upon it, the insects, the birds, and the many forms of life that pollinate it, and all animals, including ourselves, that feed upon it. 
It means truly paying attention to our relationships with each other, whether we are interacting with our friends and families, strangers in the marketplace, or walking by a homeless person on the street. It means realizing at a deep soul level, we are all one. Brian Tracy writes, the potential of the average person is like a huge ocean unsailed, a new continent unexplored, a world of possibilities waiting to be released and channeled towards some great good. We, all of us, are spiritual adventurers, exploring the greater good, following a messenger called Lovejoy, and creating a world that works for everyone. Let's make it a great one. And I would like to add, let's make it a give one. Let's make it a receive it one. And so it is. For those of you that haven't been here in the uh, past couple of weeks, I would like to introduce Charlie Collins, our new band member. Thank you. I don't recognize those words. Yeah, that's kind of my thing. <laughs> Did you do that yourself? Oh, Mary Lynn, that was fabulous. <laughs> wow. I was like, who wrote that? That's really good. Isn't she great? 
Okay, yeah, that was the new thought drummer boy. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I really liked the words and I love the beat. So, wow, excellent. Thank you so much, Mary Lynn. And now we have another one of our favorites, Reverend Randy Granger as an ordained minister with the Universal Life Seminaries, a motivational speaker, educator, workshop leader, professional musician, and licensed massage therapist. He's of Native American ancestry, and he lives right here in Las Cruces, and he also practices science of mind teaching, Zen meditation, and sound healing. Help me welcome back to the Center for Spiritual Living, Randy Granger. Good morning. Good morning. Hearing that great song reminds me of this meme that goes around Christmas time. And it says that um, upon seeing the journey and the effort and work that Mary just went through to have a child, the young man decided perfect time for a drum solo. <laughs> <laughs> This month we're talking about gifts. We're talking about giving, about gratitude, about giving and receiving. Yes. You can't hear? What's the matter? Hang on. Yeah, I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> Sorry, Pat. <laughs> okay, I'll speak more proliferously. I'm going to call in the best of my ancestors, the best of your ancestors, to be with us today, to let us know of their presence, of their gifts. Let us let them try to communicate with each other. We just had the solstice the other day, and it was a beautiful solstice along with a beautiful cold full moon. But long ago, near the beginning of the world, Gray Eagle was the guardian of the sun and the moon and the stars and of all the fresh water on earth and of fire. The Gray Eagle, he hated people so much that he kept all of these things hidden in his longhouse. He's kind of like the original Mr. Grinch. And people lived in darkness without fire, and without fresh water. And Gray Eagle had a beautiful daughter. And a raven fell in love with her. And in the beginning, raven was a snow white bird. And as such, he pleased Gray Eagle's daughter so much that she invited him into her father's longhouse. When raven saw the sun and the moon and the stars and the fresh water hanging on the walls of Gray Eagle's lodge, he knew what he had to do. He watched for a chance, and when he had a chance, he, he seized them and he stole all of them. He took the water, he took the sun, he took the moon and the stars and the ember of fire also. And he flew out of the longhouse through the smoke hole. And as soon as Raven got outside, he hung the sun up in the sky. And it made so much light that he was able to fly far off to this island in the middle of the ocean. And when the sun set, he fastened up the moon, he arranged all of the stars, and he had so much light, he was just so happy that he flew to a place in the perfect place in the land where he dropped all of the fresh water. And to this day, that's where all of the fresh water, the lakes and the rivers, comes from. And he kept on with the fire ember in his beak, and he was flying along looking for a place to put the fire. And when he reached that place, well, he, he noticed that the, the ember had begun to smoke really, really quite a bit as he flew, and it flew all over his feathers, and it started to burn in his beak, so he had to drop it. And when he dropped this ember of fire, it flew onto the rocks, and that's where it landed. So to this day, if you strike two stones together, sparks, sparks will drop out of the rock. Now, Raven's feathers never became white again because they were blackened by the smoke of the ember, and that is why today Raven is a black bird. Now, when I say the word ancestor, um, what, what comes to your mind? You, you can just say it. So. Grandparents, great grandparents. 
Okay. Anyone else? People before us. Okay. Absolutely. You know, ancestor in a lot of indigenous cultures refers to anyone who has passed on, regardless of their age, of their gender, regardless, regardless of their species. So in fact, our good friend Martha is now an ancestor to all of us. And we learn from them and they bring us gifts. So it's a cliche that someone who is wise knows more dead people than living. <laughs> but as Philip Gohm, the writer says, the songs of our ancestors are also the songs of our children. And I really love that. So when we're talking about the gifts of the ancestors, we're not, only, we're not only talking about our beautiful eyes or our high cheekbones or our perseverance or our fearlessness or our love for tamales, but they're also the sadness, the trauma, the anger, the sense of lack. Now, why would these also be gifts? Well, the reason is because we get to heal them. We get to put a balm on that cycle of patterns one of the hardest things we can do is self-examine and decide to act differently, even when we might be feeling disempowered to do so. But when we choose to do so, we help heal not only those unhealed patterns, but the unhealed ancestors, which we will become unless we let that flow of life bring light to the unhealed closets and corners of our consciousness and of our souls. Now, such is our inheritance and our legacy. Ernest Holmes, you know, he was so prescient and tuned in because he, he observed and he studied and he made it his life's work to try to understand. This is what he writes in The Art of, of Life. Since the earliest emotional reactions are those of infancy and childhood, we are subjectively conditioned early in life. We learn to either have a frank, open, satisfying self-expression or we become repressed. And, the cause of, and cause the stream of life to flow back upon itself. The very energy which might have produced happiness and satisfaction creates stagnation and disease. He goes on to say, man is made up of the sum total of his consciousness and the subconscious thoughts, plus what he inherits from his ancestors and from race thought, as he put it. Plus, and this is important, he says, a spiritual inwardness. Our trouble is not derived from life itself, but from the use we have made of it. Life exists in its fullness at the center of our being, and if it were never blocked, it would always flow through us as life, as harmony, as love, as happiness, and as success. So Ernest Holmes knew intuitively, he deduced, he concluded, and he observed that we indeed can get in the way of the fullness of life at the center of our being, as he puts it. In other words, we get in the way of, of the gifts of our natural inheritance. How we experience or see the world is largely in part due to how we were conditioned as infants and children, either by our parents, by our teachers, those around us, leaders, our ancestors. And emotional states affect our very DNA. The genetic code in our mitochondria is influenced. You know that when you're in the placenta, your mother's moods, those hormones, they're transmitted directly to you. Well, think about the ancestors, that, that whole lineage that, that we have. When I did my DNA test to discover my Native American ancestry, I was struck by, not, not only by the journey, the physical journey that they traveled, but, but by how many of them traveled. For instance, um, it showed up as my, I had ancestors from um, from Pakistan, from Turkey, then it went to northern India, to Naga, to southern India, then it went to the Mongolian, then it went to the Athabascan people, then it went down, all the way down to Palenque, where my ancestors, my most recent ancestors ended up, which is in the Yucatan. So I was struck by, you know, those thousands and tens of thousands of, of years that they had to sacrifice and make decisions and, and, and take risks so that I could be here now. It was very very humbling, but it also made me realize um, that there had been a lot of oppression, a lot of lack, a lot of fearfulness. And so I've been through my entire life in trying to work through to heal the unhealed ancestors, consequently healing myself and my future ancestors as 
Teresa put it this, this morning. So it really comes down to what Einstein proposed when he said, I think the most important question facing humanity is, is the universe a friendly place? That's an important question. He says, for if we decide that the universe is an unfriendly place, then we will use our technology, our scientific discoveries, and our natural resources to achieve safety and power by creating bigger walls to keep out the unfriendliness and bigger weapons to destroy all that which is unfriendly. And I believe that we're getting to a place where technology is powerful enough that we have either completely isolate or destroy ourselves as well in, as in this process. The, um, this, this, this continuing Einstein's um, talk about this. He goes on to say, if we decide the universe is neither friendly nor unfriendly, then that God is essentially playing dice with the universe, then we simply are victims to the random toss of the dice and our lives have no real purpose or meaning. Then he says, he, he concludes it by saying, but if we decide the universe is a friendly place, then we will use our technology, our scientific discoveries, our natural resources to create tools and models for understanding that universe because power and safety will come through understanding its workings and its motives. God does not play dice with the universe, he ultimately concludes. What I'm saying is that the unhealed and healed parts we inherit, they're all gifts. We, we can transmute and transform the unhealed parts. We can increase the best parts by being grateful for it all. Never curse or blame those gifts. Just acknowledge them and do ceremonies, do rituals and dance and, and sing. Here's a few ways that I've come across and that I also use to honor those ancestral gifts and that lineage. The first one is prayers. It's said that prayers are the first way that when we pray for any ancestor, it opens that path of the other world. It is said that prayers can lead the soul, the newly born soul in the next life to the ancestors to connect and share wisdom. I'll share a quick story. My older brother, my oldest brother, uh, my last older brother, passed away December 1st. And when I learned that he had, you know, I, I, I immediately went into my room, I lit some sage, and I started praying. And I just started praying for whatever he needed, because the way I see it is when we're born into this new life, after this life, we're infants yet again, but we have big community of ancestors just waiting there and helping us, guiding us along. We, it, it's hard for us to understand that, but I, I know it. So let me tell you what happened. I had this dream shortly after I had those prayers. This was about a week after my brother had passed. I was at this hippie commune where I've played in Tennessee called The, the uh, Farm. I've, I've done concerts there. Yeah, that's... The great place they teach a lot of midwives. It's a great program there. I've done shows there, but in my dream, I was there. There were a lot of people I didn't recognize. It was a lot more crowded. And so suddenly they brought this body into the main room next to the table, which I think was significant, the, the, the table where they all gathered. And they laid him down and I looked at him and I thought, he looks kind of familiar. And he, I hadn't seen, I had not seen my brother in probably about 25 years, but still I remember him. And they, they laid him down and I, I looked at him and he kind of had the same features as my brother. And I noticed he only had, that he had one leg missing. My brother had had his leg amputated earlier this year. So, and I was looking at him. And so the people that were around him, they dropped onto their knees and they started dancing on their knees, which I couldn't do, but um, they started to, to dance on their knees, and I walked over, and I joined them, and I started singing, and I was doing the rattle, and then their, their faces, they began glimmering from the inside, changing all these different colors and all these different patterns, and we started singing, and then all of a sudden, that man that they had brought in, he opened his eyes, and he woke up, and he said, where am I? He said, how did I get here? Why am I here? And the dream went on a little bit longer. But I then, the, the next morning I was processing it and I realized, oh, that was my brother. That was his 
spirit, his soul, his essence being born into this next place. So it proved to me that it, it affirmed that those prayers and uh, those words are so important. Now the next way to honor ancestors after prayers is tears. It's said that when we cry for them that our tears open their eyes in the other world. It allows our grief to move and opens the visions of the souls in the other world. The next way is to sing. When we sing, the idea is that we are keeping the memory alive and the rhythm of the song helps them find their way like someone singing, singing in a darkened forest. So sing and drum and dance. The last one is to forgive. Forgiveness is so crucial. When, we, when people that I know need a lot of forgiveness pass, I really do that work for them. I really help them along. The way I see it that Forgiveness is, is like currency in the afterlife. The way that they used to put coins on people's eyes so they could pay Charon to ferry them across the river Styx. Rilke, the great German writer said, uh, we are one generation through thousands of years, mothers and fathers, shaped by children to come who in their turn will overtake them. We are endlessly offered into life. All time is ours. I think that's beautiful. The human soul, it's, it's a light hidden in the dark. We're here to bring more light into the world, more healing, more joy, as our hearts are connected to the heart of the world. Our ancestors give us so much more than just our genetic gifts. We get resilience and perseverance and courage and risks taking and you know, as well as their fears and their despair and their need for revenge, all of it, their gifts passed on along that we are going to pass on. Each of us is a descendant. I like to remind myself about that. The other way that I like to honor ancestors is, is um, a South African song that they use to ritualize whenever someone dies in this particular area of South Africa, everything stops, everything, everyone and everything just stops. If they pass you and you're on the street, you're expected to also stop and to join in, to bring some honor. And the way that they do it, this is one of the ways, and it's beautiful. So what I'm gonna ask all of you to do, I'm gonna teach you this song, it's really, really easy. And what I'd like you to do is, if you feel moved, go ahead and stand up and you're, you're not being filmed, I'm, I'm just being filmed, so don't worry about that. Uh, stand up and simply honor or, or say anyone who comes to your heart. It could be, you know, we've all had quite a bit of grief these last couple of years, both, both real grief and what's called ambiguous grief, where we have that continual feeling of, of anxiety and, and, and loss mm -hmm. and, of, and of grief. That's called ambiguous grief. So. We can, what I'd ask you to all do is all of us just hold space and we're gonna hold space for you. And you can stand up and just say, I'd like to acknowledge so-and-so or I'd like to say so-and-so, I'd like to forgive so-and-so, whatever comes to your mind. It doesn't even need to be someone that you're related to. But the song goes, Away, 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 away. Away, away, hela, hela, hela. Want to try it? Away, 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 hela, hela, hela. And as we sing, just let it all go and allow that light of spirit to shine in all the corners and the closets of your consciousness, like the raven bringing light to the darkened world. I'll begin it. I remember my father, Hilberto, my older brothers, Stanley and Junie, who dropped their physical bodies. Thank you for your teachings for your protection, for your guidance, and for the songs that we shared. Away, 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 hela, hela, hela.
any of you feel moved, just go ahead. Could be for anyone or for anything. Could be for one of our um, one of our animal kin that you've lost. Anyone or anything. Go ahead. Feel free. We're go we're going to hold the space for you. So. My uncle Ralph, who lost his battle with COVID earlier this year, my mother's um, older brother. Let's hold all of these ancestors in our, in our hearts because by doing so, we allow the light to come back in. We connect with them. We allow the light of this season, the solstice, the return of the light, the return of, of consciousness and being kind. Let's sing it. Away, away. Away, 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 away. Hela, hela, hela. One more time. Away, 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 away. away, away. Hela, Hela, Hela. And I'd like you to place your feet on the ground and just get comfortable and just take in the love that's in this room at this very moment. Find something to be grateful about. Let any, any thought of any ancestor bring a smile to your face. And let your heart begin to glow like the returning light of the sun. Just feel that warmth. And you can extend that out from your heart. You can extend that out to this room, to this city, to this state, to this country, to this beautiful little world that we're on right now, this planet Earth, our mother. I'm going to end with the words from Ernest Holmes. I know there is but one mind, which is the mind of God, in which all people live and move and have their being. I know there is a divine pattern for humanity, and within this pattern, there is infinite harmony and peace, cooperation, unity, and mutual helpfulness. I know that the mind of humankind belongs one with the mind of God. And we shall discover the method, the way, and the means best fitted to permit the flow of divine love between individuals and nations. Thus, harmony and peace, cooperation, unity, and mutual helpfulness are experienced by all. I know there will be a free interchange of ideas, of cultures, of spiritual concepts, of ethics and educational systems, and scientific discoveries for all 
good belongs to all alike. I know that because divine mind has created us all that we are bound together in one infinite and perfect unity. I know that all people and all nations will remain individual but unified for the common purpose of promoting peace, happiness, harmony, prosperity. I know that deep within each person the divine pattern of perfect peace is already implanted. I now declare that in each person and in the leaders of thought everywhere, this divine pattern moves into action and form to the end that all nations and all people will live together in peace, in harmony and prosperity forever. And so it is. Thank you. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul. I thought Randy's talk was enough to get me going, but that's the song. I usually sing in my car at the top of my lungs when life is hurting. And so, <laughs> oh my goodness. And thanks for the new words in that one too. <laughs> oh boy, I'm trying to. <sighs> it's that time of year and it's, uh, what a perfect way. Thank you, Randy, you gave me his Kleenex. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to bring in our ancestors today and to sing about the beauty of this world and how great that great one spirit that we are all one with is. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks to those again who are visiting or showing up again for the first time in a long time. Our tithe recipient this month is CASA, the Court Appointed Special Advocates. And CASA is a national association that supports and promotes court appointed advocates for abused and neglected children. 
and we just let, uh, hold them up. We are their ancestors. So we hold them up and we send them that love that we're healing in our past and we're bringing through to these children and we're just seeing for them a greater peace, the right people to show up in their lives to guide them and give them that love that we know they deserve. So thank you. 10% of everything that comes through the center this month is going to support that cause. And I know that we all feel blessed. We've just experienced blessings like crazy in our lives, I think. No matter the loss, we're blessed. And that idea that grief is love, <laughs> we grieve at the level that we love. And so we have been blessed. So let's just say, repeat after me, divine love through me, love blesses, and me. blesses and multiplies. Blesses and multiplies. All, that all that I have, all that I give, all that I give and, all that I and all that I receive. Thank you, God in me. And so it is. And just feel the words as we sing. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. We are so grateful for all. so feel as blessed as I do. Thank you so much. And remember that we have practitioners here to pray with you, to support you in anything that might have come up as we are thinking about people who've gone before us. So make, uh, give them the pleasure and the honor of praying with you today if you would like to stay after. And thank you to our practitioners for your service as well. Let's just stand and sing our closing song together. Thank you. Step out 